okay uh, this is going to be a little video to introduce you all to pan pastels pan pastels are reasonably new on the scene uh, they've been around for the last few years and I have been umming and ahhing about buying them for ages and I finally took the plunge at the beginning of March to buy my first couple and I have been really impressed so what are pan pastels pan pastels come in little pans and they are highly pigmented, light fast, compressed pastels. They contain 40% more than the average stick. Uh, this is the sort of stick I would use. This is a Schmincke um, or uh, a Unison pastel stick. Um, and they uh, yield a four to five times more coverage than the average pastel stick also. I really like them so far. You apply them like paint or a bit like paint um, and you can use various tools to apply them. This is a soft tool. Uh, it's the official pan pastel um, applicators. And this is a knife that you just put a little sponge over the top and you can get different different shapes. This is a little oval one which is quite good for smaller details. This is another one that I've used as you can see it's a bit dirtier and that also has a rounder edge and for larger coverage and areas you can use their sponges and these come in also different shapes and sizes and a lot of people buy uh, high density foam makeup sponges from Amazon um, and these are quite cheap and cheerful but I find them quite good for putting down the base layers of the pan pastels so yes there's lots of options some people use brushes I don't really like the brushes I find it removes more of the pan pastel than it does apply it but everyone's different so it really is a case of experimenting with what you like and obviously ultimately what you're going to be using your pan pastels for pan pastels come as a complete set of 80 each colour comes in a pure form, this is burnt sienna, a tint where they've added white, a shade where they've added a bit of black to the pure colour and an extra dark where they've added even more black to the pure colour. It may seem expensive um, to buy the full set, you can get smaller sets such as a portrait or a landscape set or you can buy them as open stock. They're around six, seven pound a pot. You have to shop around and you can get some bargains and, and cheaper prices. I'll add some links in the uh, description below. But you don't have to buy the complete range. You could buy all the pure colours, such as this is the pure sienna, burnt sienna. And I'll give you a bit of a closer look of what they look like. Um, you could buy the pure sienna and you could make the tints and shades by just adding white or black. So you don't need to buy every single colour, tint or shade to get a full range of colours and you can mix them on the paper or on a little bit of printer paper on the side and I'm going to demonstrate how we mix pan pastels next. So here I'm going to show you how I mix my pan pastels. I have my burnt sienna pure and I have my white and my black. So I'm going to demonstrate a bit about what I said about creating the tints and the shades from just the pure colour. I have a, a flat sponge here and I'm just going to get my burnt sienna and gently wipe across the pan pastel and apply it to my paper. This is pastel mat, my favourite as you'll know. And as you can see, just lays down really easily, just gently stroke it across the paper. I'm going to pick up a bit more. There we go. Just a little bit more. And you can see how well the coverage 
goes down. You don't need to get an awful lot on your sponge to lay down quite a bit of past, bit, quite a lot of pastel. And uh, I have a bit of uh, kitchen roll here that I just use to clean my sponge off afterwards. Try and remember to do that because just if you're going into a particularly the white or a lighter colour afterwards, you're going to drag some of the sienna into that. Um, but for the next bit, I'm going to go in with my soft tool knife. There we go. Uh, I've just grabbed the oval one here. And I'm going to pick up some of the white. Just a little bit on the sponge. And just add it gently over the pure colour. And there you go. You can see how you've almost got the tint. Um, I'm just going to grab the tint shade here. Burnt Sienna tint. So you can see. Remember to clean this off our between. See, perhaps it needs a little bit more white. Uh, the tint has come down a little bit more opaque, gone down a little bit more opaque. Added a bit more white. But don't forget you can go in and if you've made it too light you can pick up the um, sienna again. And if you think you've got too much on your soft tool just gently wipe some off. I've gone in a bit darker again. Wipe it off. And uh, you can just do the same with the black. So I've just picked up a little black. Um, And that's probably a bit dark, so I'll wipe it off and pick up a bit of sienna. There you go. You have a darker sienna. So as you can see, you can create really nice wide range of colours just by having your pure colour, your white and your black. Here I'm going to show you the other method for mixing your pan pastels. I'm using bog standard printer paper. Um, to do this job. Not everyone wants to go straight onto their piece and start mixing the colours. They want to test them out on here first. So it's pretty much the same method um, as I used before. Uh, I'm going to grab my burnt sienna with my soft tool and just pop it on the printer paper here. Wipe my sponge. Grab the white and mix it in on top and I'll carry on doing that until I feel like I've got the shade or tint this will be that I like or want and then I can just add it to my piece. There you go, that's created the tint and you see how grab a bit more, see how close that is I'm running out now but I think you can see they're very very close and of course I can do exactly the same with the shades grab some burnt sienna pure color and wipe my sponge and just a little bit of black blend it all together on the printer paper and add it to the pastel mat. There we go, you've got a darker brown there. So as you can see they're really versatile, there's two ways to mix them. Very similar to painting really, treating either your pastel mat paper or your paper that you're using for the piece or the printer paper as your palette. Um, and away you go. Oh, and your soft tool like a brush. So really simple, really straightforward to use. So what are pan pastels good for? For me, uh, I love using them for creating out of focus backgrounds, the bokeh effect or a scenic background, say a river or a landscape of some description, but it's not fully in focus. Um, and they are fantastic for creating the soft blends and 
soft edges that you would requ require for something like that. I know a lot of artists use them for blocking in the tonal values like an underpainting for their portraits or whatever they're doing and then they go in with the pencil or pastel pencil over the top. I haven't really experimented much with that but it's something I want to want to look into but I thought I'd give you a bit of a demonstration of how it works. So we've got the marks that we made earlier. They weren't applied very thickly on the paper. I suspect what we've got one or, one or two layers at most. And I'm going to get the three favourite bands of pencil I use. And this is my Caran d'Ache. Faber-Castell Pit pencil and the Stabilo Carbothellos. So they're different hardnesses or softnesses. <laughs> That's not even a word. The pit, I'm going to start with the pit. This is the hardest pencil I use. And I'm just going to go over, well, I think there's one or two layers here. I'm just going to put my pencil over the pastel mat. And as you can see, it makes a nice, sharp, clear line here where we've got a couple more layers. We mixed, it does the same on here. It doesn't show up so well because it's dark, but it goes over fine. This is the next one. Uh, I'm going to grab the Carbothello. I think it falls in between the pit and the Caran d'Ache for softness. Again, nice easy marks. Got a couple more layers. Lovely. And I decided to pick a lighter colour for some reason for the Caran d'Ache, but here we go. And this is the softest of my pastel pencils. And this goes even over even easier than the other two. Lovely. And it's great over the dark. You can see the crisp, clear lines it makes. It's fantastic. Some people even use them with coloured pencils. It's not something I've tried yet. Um, this is a again it's a, a Faber Castell. It's the Polychromus, really popular, great range of coloured pencil. So I'm going to try over the one layer. Yeah, that seems to go over quite nicely. Two layers. Fantastic. Yeah, so even coloured pencils seem to go over really well. Now that's if you've put down one or two layers of pastel mat. Oh, sorry, pan pastel, but not too thick. Let's see what happens if we load the paper up a bit more. I'm just going to smudge that down with my finger a bit. Now, as you can see, it does go over, but not as well. The marks aren't as defined. It almost, I think it was almost cutting through the paper. So none of the brands of pencil seem to go through particularly well when you saturate the paper with pastel mat. So the key here is, I think, one or two, possibly three very light layers of pastel mat if you're blocking in your tone of values or doing an underpainting and then you want to go over with either pastel pencils or coloured pencils. So I will definitely be exploring this method in the future. I'll probably do some sort of tutorial on it at some point. Um, but mainly so far I have used pan pastels for creating out of focus backgrounds or the bokeh effect. And I'm going to tag on at the end of the video a couple of pet portraits I've done recently solely using pan pastels for the background. So you can see the sort of effects you can get with them and really how lovely they are. In summary, I would totally recommend you buy pan pastels or you look at investing in a set like i say you can get open stock so you can build up your collection slowly but they really really are a fantastic fantastic addition to any pastel or colored pencil artists arsenal 
So yeah, plan pastels, get the thumbs up from me. Thank you.